Thank you, Madam Speaker. This summer, Nova Scotians saw firsthand the danger and chaos that can result from the failure of our emergency alert system. During the Tantalan fires, an alert wasn't sent until over an hour after the evacuations began. During the West Hants flooding, alerts weren't sent for over two hours after being urgently requested by first responders on the scene. The government has promised to address these delays, but nothing has changed, and the results of these delays have had real impacts on the outcome of rescue and evacuation efforts. Another major storm could arrive tomorrow, Madam Speaker. Can the Premier tell Nova Scotians how they can trust that they'll receive an alert in time next time? I recognize the Honourable Premier. Madam Speaker, and this is a very serious issue, of course, mass casualty. Uh, commission raised this very issue. Um, we're working with um, um, municipalities, first responders, to talk about the best way to do this. I will say that uh, I believe that those closest to um, closest to the incident should have the authority to to issue those emergency alerts. But I, I will tell the member that from discussions with various various groups of first responders, they're not always in agreement. So some might say shelter in place. The person beside them might say, I think we should all get out of here. Well, who makes those? Like, these are difficult uh, discussions that requires some training and, and thoughtful consideration with the first responders. We're working with our first responder community and our municipalities to find the best way forward. We want to keep all Nova Scotians safe. Public safety is the, is the, is the number one concern here, for sure. I recognize the Honourable Leader of the NDP on her first supplementary. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and we hope to see action on that soon. Madam Speaker, much of our coast also remains vulnerable to this government's stunning inaction. Four years ago, all three parties in this chamber voted in favour of a bill that would regulate construction in coastal and flood-prone areas and protect coastlines from the impact of climate change, which we all see. But proclamation of the Coastal Protection Act has been continuously stalled by this government, creating a dangerous rush to build in vulnerable areas in its absence, leaving people and coastlines at risk. I want to ask the Premier why he's more concerned with allowing reckless coastal development than protecting Nova Scotians. I'll rephrase, I'll rephrase, I'll rephrase. <laughs> Why isn't what the question? Premier acting to protect our coastlines? We'll have to rule that question out of order uh, due to um, It's it's a different topic and I'd ask that you be a little more specific. I mean, we could indicate that, you know, being this broad could be everything about government, but if we could just be a little more specific. Uh, so we will have to rule that question out of order and we will move on to your, um, your final supplementary, please. The Honourable uh, Leader of the NDP. Hopefully, the Premier will have the opportunity to answer a question about coastal protection soon. We're talking about the ways in which this government is responding to our changing climate and protecting Nova Scotians in the process. Nova Scotians' homes and properties have been devastated by the storms of the past year. The July flooding alone has been estimated to have caused over $170 million in insured damages, and certainly much more that was uninsured. Last year, Fiona caused over $385 million in damage just in Nova Scotia. What used to be a once-in-a-lifetime storm simply isn't anymore. There is some relief after disaster happens, but communities and families are stuck with the costs of preparing for the next storm, with virtually no help, no environmental protection, a weak emergency alert system, and not enough support. Why is the Premier leaving people vulnerable by <laughs> refusing to prepare for the next big disaster? The Honourable Premier. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And obviously, this this past year has been a, a difficult one. We had we had we had flooding, and then we had Fiona, and then we had the fires, and we had the the July 
uh, flooding. All of these had a financial cost for sure, but uh, in my memory from all of those is the incredible loss of life from the July uh, flooding and, and, and the pain that Nova Scotia has felt from that. I mean, as when these things come, our, our climate is changing. There's no question about that. And as, as, we, as, we, as we run through these, these natural disasters, you know, we've tried to, as a government, be responsive, come up with innovative programs in the aftermath, tried to help people uh, be prepared. There's no question, uh, Madam Speaker, that this is unprecedented times for our province, and certainly the government recognizes that and will do what it can.